What is going on? John and Vash here, founders of My Entrepreneur and the My Entrepreneur Podcast, the number one podcast for entrepreneurs worldwide. And in today's episode, we're going to be doing a Q&A. We've got some of our students within our mentorship program. We've said to them, look, ask us any questions around any topic you want or just mention topics you want us to discuss. And we was doing this more for our community because we have coaching calls every single week, three times a week where we go deep on topics. But we also thought we'd bring it to the podcast today. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing. Starting off with Carolina. She said meditation and presence, abundance and mindset, not caring what others think, switching from low ticket to high ticket offers, dealing with trauma, how to be happy, finding a balance between your work life and personal life, opening up your heart. So out of all of those, I'm guessing you're gonna pick the abundance one, man. That's that's gonna be your forte. Yeah, let's do abundance and also what other people, caring what other people think of us because that's, that's, I think, big topic, big Uh, relevant topic. Yeah, and I wanna cover the, we'll do mine after, but the switching from low ticket to high ticket and how do I get companies pay me 5K Plus, but he said for speaking, but just in general, I want to talk about sales kind of like that as well. So amazing. So let's start with abundance mindset. Some people think, oh, ten thousand dollars in my bank account is abundance. For some, it's ten million dollars is abundance. But what it applies is, if I, for me, abundance is ten k in my bank account, and I draw below ten k, it means I'm not abundant. Mm, it's conditional, right? It's that very mean, conditional. Yeah. But abundance is state of mind because when I was traveling in Peru. I met people who didn't own almost anything, almost zero money, but they were the most giving. Mm. They would offer food, they would Mm. offer shelter. They had abundance mindset, which means for me, again, all of us needs to ask ourselves, what is definition of abundance for us? For me, abundance is I have way more than I need. And for some people is there will always be enough. That was, for example, for the Peru family I met, for them, they always knew the nature will provide. They will always find a way to yeah. have more. And therefore, they were hoarding. Because a lot of people, what's the opposite of abundance? Scarcity. Scarcity, right? Yeah, lack of. No, there won't be enough. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't have enough. Maybe next year I will have less. So people start holding, holding on to it. it. Yep, yep, yep. But money, what do we believe is energy, right? It needs to flow. You know, when you buy something from me, you just put the money back into circulation to me. Now I will buy something else for it. And money is consistently flowing. The thing is about abundance. If you look at the ocean, it is never ending, Yeah. right? I was leaving my Airbnb the other day and I had this huge water bowl, similar to this one here, right? And it was like filled up. And I was leaving the Airbnb, so I was tidying up. I was like, well, I'm not gonna bring it with me. I need to throw it away, right? I've been drinking from it. I was like, I'm not gonna leave it for the guy. So I was emptying it out, pouring it away. And after I emptied it out, I was like, I didn't even question that. I was like, I'll just pour it away. But if that's around something else, let's say money, I might be more hesitant to think about just just giving it away, right? Mm -hmm. Something I've worked on massively. But again, what is the difference between water and money? People are gonna go, well, money's money's not money's not abundant, there's not enough. There's like multi, multi trillions in circulation. And when you start to do this, guys, this is what I started to do to train my mind around the abundance of money. I would look at the ocean and go, there's that much money out there as well. You know, and you realize as you start to change your mindset around money as well, you stop having scarcity around it. So like today, I had to go to the post office to pick up this microphone, right? Uber there was like 30 euros. Had to pay for the mic to be delivered, 40 euros, 30 euros back. So it's like, what, nearly 100, that's 100 euros to go and get the mic. But it's just like, cool. But my old self working at a supermarket would be like, oh fuck, that would like crush me. But again, that's nothing to do with the money. It's my paradigm around the money. It's my emotional state around the money and what I'm linking to money. And then again, what does that mean? It means, again, money is just digits on a screen. You know, it's just my mindset around money. Money is an illusion. When we were traveling around South America, mm. we would go into restaurants. And I remember on the first night, Flash, don't worry, man, I got, I got this meal. Don't worry, bro. And I looked at the bill, I was like, oh shit, it's a lot of money. It was like a hundred, it was like a, a large amount of money, right? Back then when I was scarce. And then I was like, I got it. And then as soon as I saw the bill, I was like, oh fuck. But then Rash was like, oh man, that's only like 20 pound. And I was like, ah, I felt relaxed. Mm -hmm. Again, it's just my perception of it. But you see how the perception will create an emotion within me, which will create fear. And if you're scared of something, you're gonna avoid moving towards that. But again, when you train your mind to say, there's more than enough, it's not specific to money. There's more than enough of everything. 
that's the mindset you want to have. So whether it be love, yeah. whether it be happiness, whether it be money, whether it be your health, whatever it might be, you just have that abundant mindset There will always be enough. 100% because so many people think abundance equals money, but it's also opportunities, no, knowing there is more than enough opportunities. Also, if you look yeah, for Airbnbs, there's abundance of Airbnbs places. But, yeah, to that's a good point you said. People think it's to do with money, but then again, it's not the money. It's your scarcity of thinking you won't be able to figure it out. I won't have enough time. I won't have the resources or there's not enough business out there. Because if you understand there's an abundance of everything out there, if you're like, oh man, I, I, I don't know about money. Well, again, it's not about the money. It's do you believe there's enough business out yeah. there? Do you believe there's enough time to learn a skill set? Do you believe there's an abundance of opportunities? Because then everything will be okay. Exactly. Exactly. So don't link it just to money. And also I struggled with it personal and we help multiple students with that is that if you have a scarcity mindset and you start succeeding in business, let's say so you have more and more finances, if you don't overcome the scarcity, which is still fear, yep. some form of Straight fear, fear of fear. not having enough, fear of that you got lucky and you fear. will lose it. Let's say you were stingy with money or you were hoarding money when you were making $2,000 a month. The same, same thing same will happen way. at 50, at 2 million a month. That doesn't matter because it's a mindset, the external won't change that. But if let's say you're just starting out and you are having scarcity mindset, if you start solving it now, working on it right now, then it will only get better. 100%. As you make more money, it will be easier and easier. One million, I remember once when I went to this seminar, right? And I left the seminar and this was when I was much younger, maybe 16 years old. And I, had, I didn't have a lot of money, right? And I met this homeless man on the way home and I was just like, fuck it. And I just gave him like 70 pound. And for me back then, it was like a lot of money. But I knew I would always have enough. It, again, it's an inner feeling. It's just that knowingness. And even times when I didn't have money, I always knew. I was like, I know I'll have enough because I can see there's so much abundance around me. You think about the word abundant, anything. There's an abundance of ocean. There's an abundance of buildings. There's an abundance of fabric to make this sofa, the, the carpet. There's an abundance of cap. There's an abundance of everything. It's just, it's natural. It's, it's the universe, right? There isn't. What is there a lack of? There's not a lot lack of anything. It's just there's an abundance of it. But again, if your mind is blocking that out, then you won't see it. Yeah. And just you... look at nature, guys. Like there's abundance of colors, of variety, of aliveness. You know, there's just abundance. And that's the mindset you want to train yourself and let's make it practical. So a lot of people when come a bills or they are paying for something, they're like, oh, now I need to pay for the food they ordered <laughs> or they need to pay for something for their employees. Train yourself. That's what I do when I'm paying in, in silence. I'm saying, thank you. I'm grateful that I'm putting money back into circulation so they can come back to me multiplied. So I'm paying for my employees and I'm messaging them, thank you. And they said, you just paid me. Why are you thanking them? Because I'm thanking them for the work they've done. Or when I'm in restaurant, I'm grateful for putting money back into circulation. So when I'm making the payment, I'm smiling. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. smiling and I'm putting good energy. I'm training my abundant mindset. And even if you're in the store and you can't afford, let's say the most expensive brands, whatever the case might be, choose the one you can afford and be grateful that you can afford that one. Train yourself like this because all of us go through our day and with our car, ting, 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 parking, snack, smoothie, lunch, dinner. So you can train yourself 10 times a day for abundant mindset. Let's say you get a partner, right? And you want love. If you have the scarcity mindset, then you're gonna fear losing that, right? Because you don't think there's enough of that. So you're like, oh fuck, what if I lose it? Imagine for example, just imagine this example where you didn't believe there was an abundance of water, right? You'd be probably, oh, where are we gonna get water from today? Is there gonna be enough coming at the tap? You would just be thinking about it constantly. You never question it. You don't ever think about that. So if that's the case, why not have that same mindset around the other thing you feel scarce of, right? Again, it's not just money. It could be anything. It could be love. It could be your emotions. And you think, oh, I, I can't feel happy. I can't feel this happy. Because again, some level, you don't feel worthy of it. You don't think you can have that. <sighs> this, is, this is powerful, guys. This, this spark an idea in me. Imagine this. So you take somebody who is in some, let's say, poor area in Africa. They don't have much running water. They can, let's say, shower for only 20 mm. seconds. And you move them to Europe. Mm. And all of a sudden, yeah, 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 yeah. you will observe them. They go to shower 20 seconds. Do, do, do. They do it very quickly. They don't enjoy it. They're out. And you ask them, 
why you're doing this day they were just conditioned and they oh bro that's the word that is the, that's the only word here you're conditioned to believe that that's it yeah none of you go to shower and say okay we have 15 seconds let's go to do quickly hopefully today it won't run out we just do yeah. however long we want exactly bro but we being conditioned i think again when you think of abundance it does a lot of it for i think a lot of people they link it back to money right it's 100 like, so again it's like we have been conditioned to fear money and this is how society's programmed us to be and just operate from oh shit, there's not a lot of money okay if i spend this money i will lose I won't be able to get it back. If you look outside your window right now, how many buildings do you see? I can see this is probably trillions of pounds of buildings and materials out here. Trillions in front of us right now. That proves that there's an abundance out there. The only thing stopping you from having it is your thoughts around it. Your scarce thoughts thinking it's not enough. So what does that do? That creates the belief. The belief attracts and makes you behave in a certain way and you attract the financial situation into your life. But when you start expanding your mind out there and you can see what's out there, you start getting more and more and more. And I think, again, it's just the belief that blocks it, right? Very, very good answer. Abundance is a huge topic. Rash has even got a tattoo of it. So look, I'm going to talk about this one. Switching from lower ticket to high ticket offers, right? How do I get companies to pay me 5K plus for speaking, right? I had a realization recently, right? And for myself, when I was charging high ticket, I know at the beginning I would feel guilty, right? Oh, fuck. Uh, am I really worthy to charge this? You know, am I, I knew I was was like my skill is, is fucking valuable right but i had had these feelings of like, am i good enough right and i realized this is a, this is a huge paradigm shift yeah okay cool so the service i provide is going to help somebody make more money live a better lifestyle cool so they want that if i am providing the service to them and let's say they say i want to make ten thousand a month right and i charge them ten thousand to teach them what I've learned to get to that goal and beyond. If I go and say that to them, and I say, I'm gonna charge you 10,000 to do that. I know most people, even watching this video would go, that's a lot of money. How can you charge that amount of money, right? But then I was realizing, I was like, I know that I want a certain lifestyle, right? So again, it goes out to worthiness and deservingness. This is a huge paradigm shift. So if I'm saying to myself, I wanna become a multimillionaire, right? And I'm like, I've got a valuable service, I wanna charge for it. That's what I desire. Now, if I feel guilty around charging money, right? Of course, you've got to have a good service. You can't be out here scamming people, right? If you know your service is good, the only reason you would feel guilty is if the other person doesn't accomplish what you teach them or doesn't apply what you teach them, right? So now I was thinking, I was like, well, the only reason people feel bad charging something is will they get the result? But if you know and you believe in yourself and you know I'm providing an excellent service and they don't get the result, then you shouldn't feel guilty for charging someone money because that's on them. So their limiting beliefs and fears and, and whatever else is preventing them from attaining their desired goal. They are telling you, hey, I want to grow my business. Hey, I want to achieve this uh, physique goal. I want to do this. Well, I'm going to show you how to do it. And if they don't take the responsibility, keyword, to attain that, why would we feel guilty around it? We start to feel guilty for something they're doing. But when you have that paradigm of, I know my worth, I know my value, that guilt goes away. And I think that's a huge thing, bro. So many people, they don't charge their worth because they feel, I don't deserve it. But I don't believe it's they don't think they're worth it. Worth it. It's like they feel bad on the other person. If I charge them this money, will they get the result? Because if you knew for certain they'd get the result, would you feel comfortable charging them? If you said to them, it's 10,000, and I guarantee you knew with certainty they would make 20,000 back, that's a fair deal, right? If I say, Bash, you give me 10,000, I'll give you 20,000 back, fair 100%. deal. This is one of the other points. Caring what people think of us, we, we stop that from us living our dreams. So can I charge that? Is, is, it, is it really worth that? It's like, know your worth, right? And then charge it. Yeah. But two points on it. First one, maybe you as a person never invested that amount of money. Of course, so that's So you huge. can't expect others to pay for that's it. That's huge, bro. And second point uh, on top of this one is also you need to ask yourself, maybe you haven't earned the right to charge that amount mm -hmm. yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, because some people don't learn the skill. They haven't one, mastered it. You've got, you've got to be good at what you do. Right? Yeah. And again, even as we raise our prices, it was purely based off of our value and we knew it. hundred percent. But yeah, I agree with that. How many, like, we've experienced certain coaching programs where you pay 20, 30, 40K, but you don't get the value at all. And from some coaches, you get 100X. So it's being careful kind of who you invest in as well. Because let's say if you help somebody with a relationship, what price tag should you put there, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's more like this, become extremely valuable, 
Yeah, you have. Yeah, bro. The thing is, again, when I started coaching, I would, I charged Vash one thousand five hundred dollars, made a good ROI. So then I'm like, hmm, I'm valuable. You know, then I help somebody else achieve incredible results, and somebody else, and then we start helping hundreds of people. So you're like, I'm valuable. But again, you have to earn the stripes. You know, hundred percent. And for example, good example is this. So one client paid me over half million dollars over the past two years. But we've made them over five million dollars. So do I deserve it? Am I worth the 500K if I help this client generate over five million dollars? I believe so. So it's the more, the more value you provide, the more you can charge. That's how I see it. And yes. then the more you are in demand, the more you need to charge. Like let's take Uber. Usually Uber, let's say to your home is 20 pounds. You know, the moment it starts raining, it's no yeah, longer yeah. 20 pounds, it's 40 pounds. How come? All of a sudden the demand goes high, but the supply is limited. There's limited Uber uh, cars in your area. So they need to increase the prices to kind of remove few, pe few uh, people who are willing to take a bus. The same right, is right. here. Like if John continued charging 1500, he wouldn't have life because there is so much demand for his coaching that he couldn't accommodate everybody. But as he's increasing the prices, he's able to, in a way, eliminate few people who might not be willing to pay the price and he can really work with the dedicated people. 100%. And I think, yeah, like you said, bro, you, you've got to be good at what you do. That comes over time. But I think another thing, bro, a lot of people know they're good. They have a skill, they provide value, but they have limiting beliefs around that. So this is what I'm touching on this, first of all, is the mindset around charging. And I believe people don't charge their worth because they feel guilty because of what the other person will make them feel, or they don't feel worthy to receive that money. And it's a huge paradigm shift I've had to go through myself of charging a lot of money for my service. But again, I am worth that. And when you get to the level where you feel worthy, all of your emotions around feeling guilty and charging money, whatever it is, go away. So that's the first component of it. Again, it kind of links back to the abundant mindset, feeling worthy. The second thing is this, right? If you want to sell a product and you want to charge a lot of money for it, you need to get good at selling. Because if you are going to charge somebody $5,000 for a service, right? And you can't convey to that person how them spending $5,000 of you will equate to them making more than $5,000 back. They simply won't buy it, right? It's, it's, not, it's not rocket science, is it? If you can't convey the value, so how do you convey that value? You have to be able to persuade them and on, get them to your way of thinking. If you are thinking, yes, this will help them make more money, but they can't see that. They are simply not as certain in the product that it will help them. So they're like, this won't help me. But if they know, they're like, okay, if I say to any, like I said to you earlier, if I give you five grand, right? So you give me 5,000, I'll give you 10,000 cash right now. He would do it because the certainty is so high. But if I said to him, give me five grand, I might give you this 10,000. The, the certainty will go down, right? So this is why, again, when you guys are trying to grow a business, especially when, when you're selling a service, right? Master selling. Because if you don't know how to sell, you're going to lose so much fucking money. I can't imagine how much money we would have lost if we didn't know how to sell. 100%. And the sad thing is this, I see so many people who have mastered the skill, but they didn't master sale. And let's say we need, we wanted to hire agencies for a variety of things in our business, but they didn't know how to sell. Bro, they don't know. The, the common thing, again, is what I'm saying about worthiness. Going back to that original point, I would jump on calls of people trying to hire them for a service, right? You know the deal. And they go, the price is, but we can discuss it. What? Like that's your self-worth right there revealed. Again, they're, they're scared of offending you. Yeah. They're scared of charging a price tag that you might be perceived as high and you go, oh, that's too much money. Fucking hell, it's crazy. <laughs> and that's how we hire now. It's not to pay cheaper. We ask the questions such as like, that's quite a, bit, a quite high price. And all of a sudden, if the person doesn't respond, we value him because he values his worth. He knows his worth. But if the person said, oh, we can do it for half price, then we don't want a team member or we don't want agency like that because they don't know their value. Yeah, yeah, exactly, man. You know, so the best yeah. thing is even when prospect tells you, oh, that's a bit money, quite high price, don't answer it. You know, that's just uh, compared to what? So know your worth and then just charge it and stand, stand behind it. <laughs> I heard this person say the other day, they said, if somebody says to you, they're like, oh, I know people that charge cheaper, you go, Oh, I know people who pay more. 
you know, that's, we can get to sales in another podcast. But ultimately, guys, look, mindset comes first when you're, when you're selling. Because if you have beliefs around money, you have beliefs around not feeling worthy, you have beliefs around I don't deserve it, you charging money, high ticket of money is gonna fucking be hard to do. Second thing is get good at selling. Once you overcome the mindset barrier of that, get good at selling, right? Because you need to know how to persuade and influence people to your way of thinking. If you, if you re- and again, we have to do another podcast on sales, but those are the old things I would say there. How to well, care what people think of you. The easiest way I started to change my mind around what people would think of me, I just used to tell myself this affirmation, I don't give a fuck what people think of me. And the more I, do, the more I said it, and the more I backed it up with action, the less I stopped caring what people think of me. So it started when I originally launched My Entrepreneur, and we would be posting on Facebook, growing our things uh, through organic marketing. And I'll be like, oh, I don't know, man, what people are gonna think of me? And I'll be like, type the post up. I don't give a fuck, post. And then I would, it would reaffirm to me, I don't care what people think of me. And over time, I created that belief within me where I didn't care what people think of me. Mm. And I can't begin to tell you how much that one thing shifted my life. It holds so many people back. When you care what people think of you, you don't do so many things because you're like, well, what would they think? Will they make me feel, will they make me feel embarrassed? Will they make me feel this? Will they make me feel that? And again, I think when you start to love yourself, this is a key one. Again, so overlooked, especially by, for myself, I'll be like, love is for, love is for women, all this shit, right? So I'll be like, nah, I don't want to love myself. But if you love yourself, right, you don't care what people say to you. How are you going to get triggered by somebody if, if you love yourself, right? And they, they say, ah, oh, who do you think you are? Like, or they say some bullshit to you, try and put you down. If you love yourself and you're confident within yourself, you're like, I don't care what they think, you know? So ultimately it comes back to, if you respect yourself, I think ultimately this, if you respect yourself, no one can disrespect you because they're only gonna reveal to you that which you already believe about yeah. yourself. I can't call Vash a purple Chinese man who lives in Spain, who's fat. He's not gonna get triggered by that because he doesn't resonate with any way. Mm. But if I say something about you that triggers you, it's only gonna be within you that you feel. 100% and that's how we want you to start thinking guys is never stay at the surface level. The surface level is I care too much what others think of me. That's surface. Yeah, that's true. What is the deeper thing? Because I guarantee you this, human beings tend to generalize. So they say, I care what other people think of you, but maybe you play a sport where you don't care what other people think of you. There is one area, maybe it's a business because you have some insecurity or maybe Hmm. it's um, going out and approaching women, let's say, because you have some insecurity there. So rather ask yourself, what is being triggered? You know? Yes, that's a great point. It's always layer deeper. And again, don't discount it that you won't care what other people think of you. What do I mean by that is, for example, people I look up to, if they said, Vash, you should improve this. Vash, I want you to do this. I would listen to them because I respect them. I would be like, okay, so you think I could improve here? Yes, I will listen to them. But if somebody who didn't achieve my goals or is not living the life I would like to have, then I, I don't, I'm not putting too much value on their feedback because they're not where I want to be. Right, and that's it. And I do coaching in, uh, a, co- in, in a coaching company, right? Learn, uh, what's it, e-learning company. And I do coaching within there. Someone posted in there the other day in the group and they said, they said, there was a post about, don't tell your friends or family about your goals and dreams. They're gonna shut you down. You know, they're not gonna believe in you, this, this, and this. And I said, look, there's two things here. One, if you go and speak to somebody and you tell them something you're doing, you're looking for approval, most likely. Because again, you ask yourself this question, right? What's the outcome you're looking for from doing that? Why are you telling them? And most of the time, you're gonna be looking for approval because here's the, here's the reason why. Depending on what response they give you will determine how you feel, mm. right? So if I say to Vash, hey Vash, I've done this, and he goes, so? And that makes me feel bad, then it's conditional. Whereas if he says, oh, well done, bro, and I feel good by that, then I'm basing how Vash feels about me, how it makes me feel, meaning I'm not giving myself that emotion. So when people are looking for approval from other people, especially in social media, man, they fucking post their car, they get, they post this, they post that, they're looking for approval that they don't give to themselves, right? And when you start to give yourself that approval, you don't need it from other people. You don't go, I remember when I first started on my journey, I tell people stuff. But now when I accomplish things, I don't tell people. I'm just like, cool, I love myself. And the second thing is this, like I said before, if Vash 
says to me, I say, hey, Vash, man, I'm, I'm going to try this new business idea. And he goes, that's a bad idea, bro. Like, don't try that. And I get triggered by that. That's because at some level, I don't believe in myself mm. to do it. Because I'm looking for him to say, Vash, do you think it's a good idea? He says yes or no. That determines how I feel. And people don't understand this, but people can only reveal to you that which you already fucking believe. Understand this, guys. If you're getting triggered by something, it has to be within you. It's that simple. If you're good at something and you truly believe that, and I say you're shit at that, you won't care. But then if I say you're shit at something that you don't believe you're good at, it's going to trigger you because you know it's true. It's going to reveal a feeling. That's what we always say with John. If something triggers you, pay close attention because it's not bad. It's just showing you where you're not yet free. Yeah. You know, so Huge. let's say I record a podcast and somebody said that episode sucked. If I doubted if this episode is good, I would be triggered and I would be, oh, what is it about? But if I know this is fire episode, bro, bro, it's so true. It, it doesn't affect me. But the thing is as well, adding on to that, yeah? If you look at our first episode, the quality is shit, right? <laughs> But we don't of, care. Of the video, not what we oh, see. Oh yeah, yeah. The, the video, the video is on point, but the quality, the video quality, but we don't care because here's the thing, right? If I'm basing how I feel off of a outcome, okay? So let's say, for example, I put out the podcast and I'm, I'm like, oh, I hope it's amazing. Chances are on the first podcast, it's not going to be good. So if I'm linking my self-worth to that and the outcome of the podcast, I'm setting myself up for failure in some way. Because if it's not exactly how I want it to be, or there might be a mistake on it, I'm going to feel bad about it. I'm like, oh man, it's not good. And then if somebody comments, oh, that wasn't a good podcast, and I get triggered by it, again, it's relying on these external things. But you need to put your self-worth, right, on your intentions. It's something I learned from Ed Milet. I've mentioned him in every podcast. But if you put your self-worth based on the input you have, like again, we're doing this podcast right now. Might be a good podcast, might not. I can't control how the outcome's going to be, but I can control sitting down here, putting in the effort to do it. And that's what I base my self-worth on. And I think, again, so many people, they base it off of, let's say they start a YouTube channel. They do it for the outcome. That's why they are inconsistent with it. So like you'll see with the podcast, we will just stay consistent because we're not doing it for the outcome. We're doing it because we want to do it. And it's crazy, these little shifts that you can have. If you're doing something for the outcome, it's unsustainable because then it's like you wait, the outcome takes a while to come. So if you're waiting for the outcome to give you the feeling you want. Yeah, just based on your efforts, you know, because mm. my first video I did that was personalized, it sucked yeah. looking at it now, but I did my best back then. That's what I mean. And then 900 videos later, I did again my best, but my best became better than the previous best because my skill improved. As you will probably wow, see as we go through the podcast, and now we have thousands of hours of coaching. So we are pretty good at this. And we, are, we now say we are doing our best. But again, if you look at us, year from now this would be here and we will be at another best right it's, it, again what you said there this is a good example of it if vash is doing that to book a meeting right and he gets an email saying fuck off that's gonna fuck him up because he's doing it for the outcome and then he gets rejected on the outcome and he goes oh no it's not working but if his intention is i'm gonna i'm gonna film this video and i'm gonna send it off and i'm gonna do 10 of them he's already won but again, so many people, they put their self-worth on an outcome, which is uncontrollable. You can't control if the client responds. You can't control that. And people put all of their efforts and attentions on the outcome, and they completely neglect the input, which is what you have full control over. So they'll half-ass the input, right? And then they'll go, why is it not working? Why am I not getting meetings booked in, right? But they're so attached to the outcome they fucking ignore the process. So again, like simple example with the podcast, bro. We're not attached to the outcome of it. We're not like, oh, I hope this gets subscribers. I hope, because we could do this for a whole year and nothing could come of it. But we enjoy doing the podcast. We'll say, we'll meet up, we'll film a bunch of podcasts and we'll try our best. We'll put in 100% effort. And naturally, guys, you'll see one, two, three years from now, the podcast will blow up and get views and be exposed to the public because that's what happens over time. But if we're so attached to getting views and subscribers, we're going to look and be like, oh, 
We haven't got subscribers yet, Bash, and that's gonna determine the action we put in. Again, linking back to the outcome, forget that. Focus on the process and the effort you put in. Again, then you can't be triggered by what people say about you because you're basing it off of your actions and effort you put in, man. How many times, bro, how many times in your journey, right? for myself anyway, when I started, bro, I had so many ideas that didn't work, right? But if I had just linked all of my self-worth to the effort I was putting in, I would have had a lot more further progression and a lot more happiness and confidence on my journey. But because I based it off of, am I making money? Is this working? That would always cause me to sabotage and go back on myself. Right, it's not working, stop. Because I was conditionally doing it for an outcome. And when I'd get the outcome, I'd stop. Yeah, that's Huge. why I all focus on this effort. Like if you, yep. if you had a camera, the moment I wake up, the moment I go to bed, I'm just doing it for the pleasure of doing it. I'm not recording this podcast for anything else than providing value, but I focus on this moment and there is no other place I want to be right now. Are you right? That's another, oh, another concept, master the moment. You know, that's, a, that's another topic though. But yeah, I think that's kind of answered that one again. How do you stop caring what people think of you? Simply put, I decided to tell myself I don't give a fuck what people think of me. That's how I had to reprogram my belief. And then again, when you, last thing I'll leave it with this, guys. Those days where you wake up late, you snooze your alarm, you don't do the work, you skip your workout, you waste time on social media. If someone says something to you, you're more likely to get triggered because you know you fucked up, right? Mm -hmm. I know those days where I would fuck up my day and then someone would say something to me and I would be fucking pissed <laughs> because I knew they were right. It's like, you're fucking accurate. So they might say to you, ah, oh, your business isn't growing. Why? I'm like, fuck, I didn't do the work. But the days where I crush it, right? Which is every fucking day now. People can't say anything to me because I'm not basing my self-worth or my feelings off of other people. So even if somebody says to me, oh, your podcast is shit, your podcast isn't working, I'm like, cool. And you just don't care. You don't get phased by that because you know, your, you know yourself, you trust yourself. You don't get offended by something somebody says to you because you already feel good about yourself. Again, they're just gonna reveal to you that which you feel within. So an action step for this is real simple. Start to become your best friend. Start to give yourself respect. The thing you're looking for ex from externally, whatever somebody doesn't give you, right? You want the opposite of that. So if I give, if I piss Bash off and, and trigger him, and he's like, oh, he, he annoyed me because of whatever it was. What was he looking for, right? What's the approval he's looking for? Is it love? Is it respect? Whatever that might be. Well, give yourself that. Give yourself that, then you don't need it externally. Positive and negative self-talk. This is a huge topic, right? Your chatter in your brain is, like we said this on every podcast so far, it's gonna, the way you think is gonna determine how you feel, how you feel is gonna determine how you act, right? So if your self-talk, imagine we made, a, we made a, a video on this yesterday, but if I say to you right now, just quit, stop trying. Why are you bothering? Go and waste time on social media. You're not good enough to do this. Who said you, who said you can do this? How are you gonna start to feel? You're gonna start to feel awful, right? But this is how most people talk in their head. They just have this programmed negative chatter looping around, looping around and they wonder why they can't take the actions they want because they're literally talking to themselves like you can't do this, this won't work out. Again, that if I'm saying to you guys, you're fucking not good enough, it's not gonna work out, why are you trying? How are you gonna feel? You're gonna feel bad. You're gonna feel unworthy. You're not gonna feel good enough. So how, what kind of action are you gonna take if that's how you're operating from? But this is why people operate in a low state because they're talking to themselves in a low way. So they feel that, they act in that way. Now, if I say to you, I believe in you, you can do this, trust yourself. This is why motivational videos work for a small period of time because they get you pumped up consciously, but your subconscious mind is still programmed. So you get this burst of motivation, but then you go back to your old ways. So the key to self-talk, right? Simply put, how do you build muscles in the gym? It's repetition consistently doing it again and again and again. So the same with self-talk. When you catch yourself talking to yourself negatively, right, which is hard to do because you're, you're so unconscious a lot of the time, start re literally reframing that. There's a, a simple technique I learned and it calls, it's called deny and affirm. I've told you this one. So if you have a thought pops up that doesn't serve you, you say, no, I don't believe that. I believe this, right? So you deny and affirm it. But the long-term goal, the easiest way is through meditation or, or specifically, I like to do visualization, so do you. But when I listen to these hypnotherapy tapes 
and I'm in this drowsy state where my subconscious mind is most receptive and he's telling me beliefs I want to, I believe, eventually that becomes unconscious for me. Because if you have a negative belief in your mind, it's just, a, again, it's conditioned, it's a program. But what if your belief was, I can do this mm -hmm. instead of I can't do this? You're gonna be driven to do the thing because unconsciously I can do this. So when you come to do self-talk, reprogram your mind. You can use affirmations, visualization, self-talk, but the key thing is repetition. Again and again, reminding yourself. When me and Vash were traveling, Vash gave me a simple idea. He said, look, just pick one affirmation you're gonna use. So I picked three, right? <laughs> I picked three, but it was, I'm calm, I'm confident, and I'm courageous. So when I started to say this to myself every day, I then started to believe it. And I started to match that word with an image in my mind. So I remember I would say, I am calm when I'd be sitting on the beach. So then when I would do that now, I would feel those emotions of being on a beach and I would start to feel calm. So again, that's how you do it. It's repetition of those words that you want to believe. And again, what you start to say to yourself, the belief will become the belief, right? So if you say, I am good enough, I am good enough brainwashing yourself, you will eventually believe it. Uh, just imagine that you're speaking to your best friend. You would never say the things you're telling yourself if that was your best friend, you sure. know? If I just separated your voice from you and I sit the voice next to you when you're working, I would be, who is this guy? Because the voice is like, you can't do this, you can't focus, let's escape, all of these words. But imagine that you just imagine that's your best friend who is a man, you can do this, come on, one more minute, you can focus, I believe in you, it's inevitable, it's already done, you're doing amazing. Mm -hmm. And the more you do this, especially after you finish something, so after we record this episode, we will celebrate, meaning I will high five myself and say, amazing job, Vaj, you did incredible. <laughs> I would just reinforce kind of the voice I want in my head that tells me, Vaj, you can do anything. But that's the key thing. It's like, you can choose. You can choose, right? And again, if people are in a, if you're watching this right now and you're in a negative spiral and you're like, oh, I have this, you know, these limiting beliefs, you've just chosen that. You have to accept that right now. You chose those beliefs once upon a time, whether you was conscious or not, you accepted it, right? So you have the same responsibility now to change that. So if you sit there and go, and again, I've been through depression and things like that. Again, it's like, this, this is another topic, but the point is I've been there when I'm in a low place. I told, I programmed that to myself. I allowed those thoughts to slip by. I allowed myself to fall into those feelings and emotions, which caused me to act in a bad way. As simple as that. But when you take acceptance of that and you realize you have power over your conscious mind, you can direct the conscious mind. The, con the conscious mind is the commander. The subconscious mind is the receiver, right? So whatever you tell your subconscious mind, it will believe. But so many people have just impregnated their subconscious mind again and again and again with this negative talk. And I like to use the analogy of like a, a garden. So imagine you have a garden and it's just full of weeds because you've just been planting weeds all, all for years and years and years, planting these weeds and then nourishing them. You plant this seed and it's like, horrible weeds that have grown and then you keep on reaffirming that so you say i'm not good enough and then you find evidence why i'm not good enough oh yeah that i'm not good enough grows the weed but the same is true with roses and plants and flowers you want if you was to plant those starting from now and you start saying i am good enough and then you look for evidence and then you start growing and growing and growing and then you have this beautiful garden with flowers and things you actually want but again most people have just programmed their mind with shit things that they don't want and it's so ingrained in there and they never use repetition and reprogramming to do it. But for me and Vash now, we created the people where it's so unconscious for us to operate from a state that we want to because we've programmed it. So again, it's unconscious. One of our programs is called Mind Systems, making it automatic and easy to do the things that you know you need to do. So if you have to force yourself to do something, you have to use discipline and willpower, right? But Imagine this, if you went on Instagram today or you wasted time today doing something you didn't value, imagine if you could make that just as easy to do your morning routine or you could make it just as easy to meditate or work on your business or work out. And that same automatic response you have to negative things, you can make positive. That's the long-term goal. Then you just win at life, bro, without even trying. Yeah, and that's a huge thing we were talking about in yesterday's uh, coaching call in the, in the program in the community was when you need something, right? You are saying to yourself, you don't have. 
if I need something, it means I don't have that, right? When you look at anything, let's take business, right? If I am growing my business, what am I doing it for? Money, I, I want money. Now, if you're coming from the state of mind of I need this money, right? I need it and I've been there. And you need it, need it, need it, need it. I don't have, right? But it's not the money you need, right? It's what the money's gonna do for you. And the money's gonna give you a feeling. It's gonna give you something. So if you say to yourself, why am I doing this? Well, I'm doing money to feel, let's say, to travel the world. Why am I, why do I wanna travel the world? Because I want to be able to experience living life, why? Well, because I've never done that before and it will be fun. Okay, how's that gonna make you feel? How are you gonna feel when you're walking around Thailand on the beach, knowing you crush business and you're winning at life? Well, I'm gonna feel proud. I'm gonna feel happy for myself. And that's the point we're trying to make here, guys. You can accomplish your goal, right? And do it in a way that's forced and you don't have any emotions and stuff like that. That can be done, right? But ultimately, wouldn't you rather do it in a way where you're enjoying life and you're waking up every day and you're happy and you're, and you're fucking excited and you're feeling proud and love and joy and all of these higher emotions? Because here's the thing as well, guys, nothing external is going to change how you feel. You know, people say, oh, money won't make you happier, right? An iPhone or a laptop or something. Now, when you first got that, did it make you happier? Yes, it did. For that moment in time, you were happy. You were really excited by your phone. But does it give you the same feeling now? No. Are you at a position in your life now that last year you dreamed of being in? Maybe it could be as simple as investing in a certain program. It could be a certain purchase you made. It could be you moved into a new apartment. Now, when you first attained them, did it make you happier? Yes, for a short term, but long term, it fades away, right? Because your body, your, your mind, it just becomes accustomed to what is normal. It's just, okay, this is normal now. And the thing is, guys, unless you train your mind to consciously choose the emotions you wanna experience and you actively seek out feeling them and making those familiar with you, it does not matter what you attain externally because the emotions are still gonna be within you. And if you have developed years and years of emotions of feeling guilt or shame or apathy, right? It does not matter how much money you make. I know there's guys watching this who've made loads of money, right? And you make this money, but then maybe a few days later, you're still fucking around, going on Netflix or going on YouTube or doing behaviors you don't value, smoking weed, going out drinking. You thought the external thing would change you, but it didn't because you need to change the internal. And this is again why we say if you're a mind entrepreneur, they pursue mastery of all areas of their life, especially their emotions and their, their emotional state of mind and their feelings. Because we know entrepreneurs making multi-millions, right? They don't feel good. And it starts falling, guys. You know, you can achieve your goals by pushing, forcing yourself. I have to, oh my goodness. I will force myself, discipline myself. Or you can just feel so good that you will naturally do it. And you might say, oh, well, I will get lazy. No way. Let me ask you this. When you did behaviors you don't value, did you feel super happy, super excited, or were you in lower state emotions? I guarantee you were escaping some pain. Maybe you felt bored, so you went and scrolled TikTok, or you played video games. Yeah. But I guarantee if you Facts. feel excited, if you feel happy, if you feel love, all of a sudden, going to gym is easy. Right? How, bro, imagine right now, me and Bash are high vibrations right now, crushing this podcast, had a great day. The last thing I'm gonna do is go and waste time on social media. The last thing I'm gonna do, because I'm in a high vibration and it's mm -hmm. so true. No, if I, if I start feeling happy and proud, then I'm not gonna wanna take action. Bullshit. Bullshit. Happiness is superpower, guys. Bro, it's so true. Because even if you're happy, then you do it because you love it. Because if I'm happy, without a car, then once I get the car, it will be bonus. But if somebody steals the car, I'm still happy. Because so many people say, once I have the car, I will feel worthy, I will feel significant, I will feel I achieve something. But that means, what if you crash the car? What if somebody takes the car away from you? All of a sudden, you will lose the sense of your worth 
It doesn't make sense. So start conditioning yourself to feel happy, excited, love now, and you do that by spending time with yourself. So how can you truly love yourself if you don't spend time with yourself? So I encourage you to start spending more time with you. Spend time with you to develop a relationship with you, understanding your desires, understanding your fears. And the more time you spend with yourself, the more you will love yourself. Yeah, facts. And again, it's like you said the example with your girlfriend, if you're with her and you spend 10 minutes together a day, cool. But even take this example, if you're with her, but you're on your phone. Mm. Same thing, if you're with her, but you're doing work. But again, we're always doing that with ourselves. We're just keeping ourselves busy, keeping ourselves busy. If you don't spend time by yourself, you're not gonna get to know yourself, so how can you build a relationship with yourself? What I would say, guys, comment below what kind of topics you wanna see us cover. If you wanna know more about working with us or any of that good stuff, go to our website, mindtrepreneur.com. If you like it, hit subscribe because this is our passion, so we'll continue doing that and we'll provide more and more value so you can live your best life. See you in the next episode. Take care.